Grandma DC here. And what's for dinner? Well, I think I mentioned in my last vlog that I was going to do mini meatloafs. And uh, Debbie, she's been all worried about what to use as a, uh, like a binder, like instead of crackers and things, and mini meatloafs. So uh, I just thought I'd show you what I do. And again, simple, simple. You might recognize this. That's the cheese I made with the chives in it. It's been in the freezer. It's still frozen. I've been ricing cauliflower. I have about a cup of riced cauliflower in here. I'm going to throw in a small onion. Grate it up with the uh, cauliflower. This is the keto bread we made from our magic bread mix or our magic everything mix actually. And I'm going to zip it in here as well. I think one's enough. I get this out of here, put it into there. And we're going to need about two eggs. Two large eggs. I'm going to throw a little of that homemade cheese in there. That homemade feta cheese I made. Oh, and after a quick stop off at the refrigerator, I realized I found some mushrooms that still look good. I would love to put some mushroom in here. How oh, wonderful. Came out nice and shredded. That's fantastic. Well, if you like mushrooms, this is going to be the meatloaf for you. Got two large eggs. Oh, I got kicked off the basketball team just then. Much to my dog's happiness. He loves eggshells. Think they're any good for him, all that calcium? I think so. The only way to mix a meatloaf, I am sorry, for you people who are phobic, and remember, I'm the only person eating this, so it's my hands, my house, my meatloaf, um, is to use your hands. Seriously, it is the only way to get in there and do this. So, okay, now we need salt and pepper, I feel. Remember, this is a keto diet, so we like salt in our food. I use coarse pepper a lot. I just love that stuff. I'm thinking maybe a little thyme. Let me smell it. Mmm, just a little thyme. We all need thyme. Okay, now. Hopefully you can see this. Angus is after the goats again because they got up on the porch. He thinks that's his domain. You can probably hear Pop outside. He decided to mow my lawn. But by this time, it's more like haying, not the back lawn. He can't get in there. That's too much with all the wood and everything on the ground. He can't get in there. But he does mow out around the outside of my house where it's uh, shorter and it's been being mowed by him. Of course we're using bacon. It's meatloaf. And I am making mini meatloafs. So I'm going to put a piece of bacon just about inside each one of these. May have to start with the ones on the left and work our way over to the right. This bacon smells pretty good. I got this for $2.50 for a pound. That was a heck of a buy. And here I was, had left my purse at home. I bought a lot more, <laughs> but I was having mom pay for it, so <laughs> I had to pay her back. All right. Got two pieces in each one on the left. And then we're going to put the meatloaf in there, like so. I probably overfilled that, so I'll just hump it up and leave a little. I really like cheese buried inside my meatloafs. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, you could cut it up into little chunks and mix it in there or anything you want, but 
I just like to stuff it in there. Kind of close it over the top a little bit. And then wrap it. Make another little slit. So I put the mini meatloafs in at 375 degrees. Going to check on them in 45 minutes. Want to make sure that bacon gets good and done. Now I've got the rest of my riced up cauliflower here and I had a little bit of meat left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in with the riced up cauliflower and we're going to add some butter, probably about four tablespoons and a little bit of, uh, well, I have olive oil, a nice salt and pepper and olive oil. And we're going to fry rice, cauliflower rice. You hear that sizzle? Get that off of there before it catches on fire. Everybody watching me now to see when I'm catching on fire. I know you are. You keep watching, it probably will. I'm going to put a little bit of garlic in with my rice, just because I want to. Italian up my rice a little bit. And. We'll be back when dinner is done. I'm going to keep stirring. Oh, yeah. That's going to be delicious. While dinner is cooking, I decided that I would finally take a break from YouTubing and uh, messing up my kitchen. I now have two sink fulls of dishes that need done. Leave the kitty alone! Always when I start blogging. Which is why I need to try the matcha tea. Finally gonna do it. So here it goes. It says it will clear my mind and give me calm. And yet clear. I can't even imagine my mind being calm and clear. So we're gonna try this. And I'll tell you what it tastes like for real. My understanding is that even though this is the culinary kind and not the, you know, really high grade centennial kind, that it's still good for tea. It smells interesting. It smells like fresh mowed lawn and what is that? I smelled that when I was a teenager back in the early 70s. Is that what that smells like? <laughs> Maybe that's why it gives you a sense of calm. Oh no, I let out its secret. Well, let's have a look. Well, that's nice and bright green, as it is supposed to be. Focus, focus. So I'm gonna put a, uh, we're gonna just get a small teaspoon here because I have a small amount of water. And we're gonna stir that in. Ooh, bright green. Very pretty. I had the water sitting here because I wanted it warm, not hot. And my understanding is, is if you shake matcha tea, it, uh, it's better. They say it gets a little, a little froth on it or something, and it's better. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Let's get a little froth on it. Skull. Cheers. Probes. Let's try this. You know, that's doable. I didn't think it would be. It doesn't have much taste at all, actually. Maybe I didn't put enough in. It's not really a grassy or a chlorophyll -y taste. Now, I did put just a whiff, a bare whiff of stevia in it. I just can't do bitter stuff. 
that's actually good. It's actually good. I am shocked. All right. Well, dinner won't be done for half an hour, and that should give this time to affect my brain. Let's see if I'm calmer when I come back in. And if I get much calmer, I'll probably be asleep. We'll find out. And here they are. Now, I haven't put any salsa on them yet, and they would be delicious just like this. But uh, I'm going to put a salsa on three of them. I've been doing dishes in the hose. Can you tell? Soaking. <laughs> it ain't easy doing dishes in a garden hose. Let me tell you, I've been doing it for years. And I go to work, and they have about a tablespoon on each. And they have uh, dishwashers. And I'm, everyone's complaining about having to load the dishwasher. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, it's all in what you get used to. I'm going to return these to the oven for just 10 minutes. Here's my rice. I got it nice and crispy. And it really does truly taste like rice. Mmm. Wow. I like that. Just a little bit of char on there. It's going to be fantastic with the meatloaf. And here's what's for dinner at Grandma's house tonight. Cheese stuffed meatloaf with bacon, cauliflower fried rice, and just about a teaspoon or so of salsa. Oh yeah. Don't you wish you were eating here with me tonight? <laughs> I gotta take a bite of this bad boy. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Oh, so good. I cooked it for about 55 minutes. Just wanted to make sure it was really, really done. And uh, it's just delicious with this fried rice. Mmm. Well, I'm going to wrap up the rest of them and all week long, whenever I need a quick keto meal, I'm pulling out one of these things. It'd even make a nice thick hamburger on one of my pieces of bread. <laughs> all right, I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, share, or subscribe. Now keep up with the insanity. And at least we ended up with one good meal today. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm not going to do any more dishes for until I, until I dry out. Love you all. Share. Share. Bye-bye.